In these sections, so this is section 2.5, 2.6, and 2.7, we want to try to optimize by finding maximum or minimum. So this is all kind of general optimization problems because, again, anytime you ask for a max or min, you're trying to optimize something. So there's a few different things that we're going to do. The first is if you're just given a simple formula. Okay, and so this actually isn't anything new. This is just what we did. If we have a ball that's thrown straight up in the air, the height of the ball is this height function. We want to know when will the ball reach its maximum height and what will its maximum height be. So this is what we did in our last chapter. <coughs> We're just again looking for a maximum or a minimum. So anytime you want to find a maximum or minimum, you start by finding the derivative. So the derivative of this would be, let's see, negative 16 times 2 times t to the power of 1 plus 40. And you always set your derivative equal to 0 and solve for t. Let's see, so negative 32 t plus 40. So t equals <coughs> 1.25. And this should be seconds if I remember right. <clears throat> okay, so this is our critical value for a possible max or min. And so if you want to see if it's a max or min, you draw your number line and you plug in points from either side, like 0 or let's say 3, just anything from either side, into your first derivative. So s of prime of 0 would be negative 32 times 0 plus 40, which equals 40, which is positive. So we'd be going up. And then s prime of 3 would be negative 32 times 3 plus 40, which should be something really big and negative. Negative 56. So we'd be going down. So you look and you're like, okay, I was going up and then I was going down, so that looks like I should have a maximum there. Which is what I was hoping for, because we want to know when will it reach its maximum height. So we'll say it's a max height at t equals 1.25 seconds. <coughs> Sometimes we want, might want to know what is that actual maximum height. So what is your actual height? Well, to find your height, you plug in your time into your original function, s of t. So s of 1.25 is negative 16 t squared. Oh, instead of t, we now need to put in our 1.25 plus 40 times 1.25 plus 6, which is 31 feet. They didn't actually tell me the feet in seconds. I should make sure I always put those on the problems, but I don't always. So our max height is going to be at 1.25 seconds, and the max height is 31 feet. So again, this is, you're going to do a bunch of problems like this, but this isn't really anything new because we've already learned how to find a maximum or minimum. So now, for the one thing that is going to be new, so this is when you have physical optimization with constraints. The big thing here is these constraints. <clears throat> so let's start. So we have a budget of $200 to fence in a rectangular garden. So we have a garden. The fencing for one side of the garden facing the road costs $10 a foot. So let's say the road's over here, so that's going to be $10 a foot. And the fencing for the other sides costs $3 a foot. So it's just more expensive to put it next to the road. We want to find our dimensions that maximize our garden space because it makes sense you want the biggest garden you can, but we only have $200. <clears throat> so we want to maximize our garden space. So we want to maximize our area. Now if you look at this garden, they did say it's a rectangle. So let's call this X, Y, X, Y. <coughs> Our area is equal to x times y. We want to maximize this. We would do this by finding the derivative. But we don't know how to do that if we have more than one variable. 
And we don't know how to find the maximum if we only have one variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, wait, we also know that we have a budget of $200. Okay, so we have a constraint. That's a constraint. We can only go up to $200. So that means if we add up all of these, the cost for all of the perimeter, it can only be $200. Now the cost for the perimeter, we're going to have x feet going this way, and each foot costs $10. So we're going to have 10x. Plus, and then this side, we're going to have y feet, and each foot costs $3, so that would be 3y. Plus, this side we have x feet, $3 each, so 3x. And here, 3 times y would be, again, 3y. And that has to equal 200. So now we actually have two equations, and that's what makes this completely new from anything we've done before. What you're going to do is you say, I want to maximize my area. So this is the equation I truly care about, but I can only have one variable. So what I want to do is get rid of either that x or y. We can do that by coming to our constraint variable and solving for either x or y. So let's say we want to solve for x. I just randomly picked, you can pick y just as easily. Okay, so let's simplify. So we have 13x plus 6y equals 200. So 13x equals 200 minus 6y. Then x equals, I'm going to divide each of these numbers by 13. So 15.38 minus 0.46y. So we found an x value, and we can take this x and plug it into the area. <coughs> so let's see what that will be. Instead of x equals x times y, we'll now have our area equals, instead of an x, we put in our 15.38 minus 0.46y times y. <coughs> or area equals 15.38y minus 0.46y squared. So that might seem like we've done a lot of work up to this point. And we have. So we've done all this work. We've finally gotten our equation of what we actually want to maximize. So we want, want to maximize. area. <coughs> and we've finally done all that work and we've gotten it down to just one variable. And at this point, we know how to do this. Now we find the maximum like normal. To find a maximum, you always start by taking the derivative. So the derivative of this will be 15.38 minus 0.46 times 2y. We'll set that equal to 0. So 0 equals 15.38 minus point nine two y. So we get y equals sixteen point seven two. Okay, so this is our critical value of a possible max or min. Now technically Every time you do this, you should draw a number line to make sure that it is either the maximum or minimum. What We might have done all this work, and maybe that ends up being a minimum and not a maximum. However, I know students are usually a little bit reluctant to do more work than they need to. And we usually get in the habit, if it asks us to find the maximum, we assume the number we get is the maximum. Okay. And I understand that's probably what you'll do, but... Just to be clear, you should always check a number on either side. So let's pick a 0. Let's pick, say, 20. I'm going to plug these in really quick into my area. So area at y equals 0 would be 0. Sorry. <laughs> you plug it into your derivative because you want to know if the slope is positive or negative. So the derivative would be... 15.38, so positive. So that'd be going up. And the derivative at y equals 20. Negative 3.02, so that's negative. So that'd be going down. So check, that is a maximum. 
So we will have our max area if y equals 16.72. Now we were probably supposed to find the actual dimension, so we should probably find what x is. So we should say if y equals 16.72, then x equals, so you come back up and say, where do we have our equation with x and y? Here's our equation with x and y. x is 15.38 minus 0.46y. So in this case, x would be 15.38 minus 0.46 times y. <coughs> which equals 7, 7.69. So these are the kind of harder problems that you have to do for your homework. The other ones are basically just lots of new applications. But these ones where you actually have your two equations are the ones that get a little bit harder. So let's kind of talk about some strategies. So first of all, as you're doing your homework, we have what's called objective equations and constraint equations. The objective equation is always what you want to maximize. The constraint is what's constraining you. Okay, and we have steps of optimization problems. <coughs> so first we decide what we want to maximize, and that's called our objective equation. And then we find our constraint equation. So let's go through, for I want, based on our last example, I want to take each of these steps and see what we did on our last example. Okay, so first I said draw a picture. We did that, I'm not going to redraw that. Okay, and then you decide what you want to maximize. That's called our objective equation, what we're going for. So we want to maximize our area. And this was our area equals x times y. But the problem here is two variables, and we don't like things with two variables. So then we found our constraint equation. The constraint equation is something that is, again, constraining you. For in this case, it was our budget. We have a set budget. So our constraint equation was our 10x plus 3y plus 3x plus 3y equals 200. And then you use your constraint equation. You always go through and you solve for one variable. It doesn't matter which one. You can pick either one. So we solved for and we got x equals 15.38 minus 0.46y. And once you do that, you can plug this into your objective equation. So back up to objective equation. And that will then simplify so you only have one variable. <coughs> so we plugged it in. So we had our area equals 15.38y minus 0.46y squared once we simplify. Once you have it down to what you actually ma want to maximize and you only have one variable, then you just find the maximum like normal by setting the first derivative of your objective equation equal to zero. So we said a prime, we found the first derivative, is our 15.38 minus 0.46 times 2y. We set that equal to zero and we solved for y. So y equals 16.72. And then I didn't actually write down a step, but there is that implied step of we found y, but sometimes we might also want to know what x is and then what a is. And you just do that by going up to your various problems and plugging things in when you need to. So 7, solve for anything else you need. But that's kind of the easy stuff at the very end. So we found x equals our 7.69, and our max area is 128.6, our max area. <coughs> and then finally, since this is considered business calculus, we like to do a lot of business problems. This is all kind of very simple, just again, one variable. Let's just look at a few more things for our terminology. Okay, so first of all, when you talk about quantity, our little x is considered the number of items that you sell. A price, p, is that price that each item sells for. 
Sometimes that's considered to be a static price and they'll just say each item sells for $10. But sometimes they'll give you an actual function. So they'll do what's called the demand function and it'll be P equals actual sum function, which sometimes our book says F of X, but usually they just write a P equals. And that's actually the highest price that we can set and still sell X items, but it'll still be the price that each item sells for. We have our cost, which is what it costs the company to make and sell X items. We have our revenue, R of X is the amount of money we get for selling those X items. <coughs> and sometimes this one will be given to you, and they'll just say R of X equals blah, blah, blah. If not, <coughs> sometimes they'll tell you what X or P are. So the amount of money that you make will be the number of items you sell times the price of each item. So the revenue is the number of items times the price. That makes sense. And again, finally, profit is the difference between the money that a company gets and how much the company had to spend to get it. So our profit is our revenue minus cost. And if you see the words marginal, it just means they're talking about the derivative. So for example, the marginal profit is the derivative of P of X. So in this example, we have a demand equation for an item is P equals 10 minus 0.01 X squared. Find the number of items we should produce to sell, produce and sell to maximize revenue. <coughs> so we want to maximize revenue. So let's find an equation for revenue. Revenue should always be equal to, they didn't tell us the equation for revenue, so it's just going to be equal to X times our price. And it turns out they did tell us an equation for our price. It's 10 minus 0.01 X squared. Okay, so we know what we want to maximize. Anytime you know what you want to maximize, now you go through and you try and find the derivative. Let's simplify this first, though. This is 10x minus 0.01x cubed. So our derivative is going to be 10 minus 0.01 times 3x squared. Now we set that equal to 0 and solve for x. These are the steps we always follow. Let's see. So x squared should equal... 333.33 and so x should equal plus or minus 18.257 now you'll notice as you go through on these we are actually dealing with a lot of decimals and as you go through if you don't carry your answers out to a lot of decimals your answer might be slightly different than the answer in the textbook that's okay Hopefully it's fairly close. If it's not and you think you're getting marked off just because you rounded differently, let me know. I can look at it and see how close your problem, your answer really was. Okay, so we know that <coughs> x equals plus or minus 18.257. We have possible, max, or mins. Okay. Now, notice we have a positive or negative. Does it make sense to sell negative items? No, so we ignore the nonsensical negative answer. Now, again, technically, we should probably check and make sure there is a maximum right here. But where it asks us to maximize them, Usually we can assume that is going to be the maximum, and sometimes we forget and we don't actually do that part. Okay. And so our final answer would be <coughs> we can maximize profit if we produce and sell 18 units. Okay. And just a few remarks here. Okay. First, the production level, if you see that terminology, they mean how many items we're making and selling. Okay, there's also a little use fact that you can use, instead of doing it this way sometimes, that your profit is maximized at a production level, X, where your marginal revenue and cost are equal. So if you can figure out where R prime and C prime are equal, that's where you'll maximize your profit. 
And finally, make sure you bring the textbook and all the examples for these sections. Watch the various YouTube videos. It's not so much that you can just watch me do this once and you're good because you learned the theory. We don't really have a lot of new theory. We're just applying what we've already learned. And the only way you get good at applying is seeing lots of examples and doing lots of examples.